In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Manuel Arellano died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. and sisters, as one family trusting in the love and mercy of God, let us lovingly offer our beloved Manuel unto the hands of our loving Father. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant, Manuel Arellano, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven, woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, the reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. God, beyond my wants, beyond 
my fears from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. First, I would like to express once again my condolences to the family of our beloved brother, Manuel Arellano, especially to his children, Maria and Sergio, uh, Steve here, also to Xavier and your families, um, to the grandchildren, great-grandchildren of Manuel, and um, all those who belong to the family feeling this uh, sense of loss because of the passing of Manuel to eternal life. Today, once again, we feel the sadness that death can bring. And many times, words are simply not enough to describe the pain that it brings to the grieving family who are left behind because it leaves that that space in your hearts that only he can fill. There's that absence of him and the awareness that he is gone and things will never be the same again. Especially during this time of the year when we are looking forward to Christmas and New Year, it'll definitely be different for all of you. St. Paul, in the second reading today, in his letter to the Thessalonians, said that, yes, we can grieve, but we should not grieve like people who do not have hope. And he says, because we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and therefore we believe that God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in death. That is a great assurance for us. Our hope does not take away the pain and sadness, but it gives us something that consoles us because of the knowledge that Manuel is in the hands of God, who is merciful and loving, that Manuel has come to the, to the destiny that we all have been called to and we all live and hope for. And so, yes, we do grieve, but as, as people of hope, we know that through what Jesus did for us, he suffered and died. We have been assured that truly there is eternal life because he resurrected. The fact that he came back from the dead, it is that proof to us that life does not end at death. We have been blessed because we believe in eternity that, yes, our mortal bodies will, you know, will cease to, to work the way it used to be used to do, but we know that even if decay sets in, our souls, our spirits still remain, and they go to God, before God, hoping that in his mercy we will all be saved.
almost 90 years, he almost made it to 90, right? And that's why, though it is sad to say goodbye today, there is that reason to be thankful. First of all, 90 years of, I would say, colorful, blessed, many times challenging life that uh, Manuel had. And I believe um, Maria will tell us even more about her father uh, at the end of the Mass. But uh, looking at his biography, I was, I was impressed by a lot of things, you know, how hardworking he was, how he did his best to provide for the family. He was a very loving husband and uh, took care of, uh, of his wife, very loving father to his children. He loved, you know, some things, loved circus and took, took his kids, you know, to them. He loved uh, air shows, and he loved watching airplanes perform tricks you know, and, and stunts in the air. That's something that uh, you know, I can relate to because I'm also like that. You know, uh, when I see a chopper hovering up, I would stop and, and watch it. Yeah. And at airports, yeah, like he did yeah, to you, even, when, when you were young, we, you would be going to the airport and watch airplanes uh, land and take off. Yeah, there's, I, I, I understand that thrill. You know, we're, yeah, in fact, um, I was hoping he learned to, to play the uh, uh, Microsoft uh, flight simulator on the computer. Because I, I did that a lot. In many years ago, it was interesting to be flying, and uh, um, yeah, but that's uh, one of his uh, interests. Um, very interesting is, you know, his his childhood, the challenges that he had to face, but if he transcended above those, and and even his experiences made him, you know, a, a stronger person, and. Um, and uh, was able to, you know, live through it, and then so that with his life's experience, he uh, made sure that things were bright for his own family. Jesus in the Gospels said, in my Father's house there are many dwelling places, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. That's the great promise of Jesus. He will prepare a place, and then he will call us so that where he is, we shall be. And that will be glorious. And we look forward with high expectancy to that. We trust in the promise of Jesus, because he said, those of us who want to go to the Father, we only have to go with him, with Jesus. Because he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So today, we celebrate the power of God's love as we continue praying for Manuel and for ourselves who are still journeying on this earth. We proclaim that our true life is being with God in the eternal happiness in his kingdom. With Jesus, with the Blessed Mother, the angels and the saints. And there we will be reunited with Manuel and all our departed ones where every tear will be wiped away. There will just be glory and rejoicing in the presence of God. So once again, Maria, Sergio, Steve, and Savior, and the rest of the family, our condolences to all of you.
God the Almighty Father raised Christ his Son from the dead. With confidence we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Manuel, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he now be admitted to the company of saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother, that they may be consoled in their grief, by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our beloved brother Manuel and all who have died cleanse them of their sins, and grant them the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of our servant, Manuel, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled with the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end. We acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, Edward is assistant, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Manuel Arellano, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At a Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Agnus Dei, qui tolles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Quit all this peccata mundi, donat nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant us strengthened by it, our brother Emmanuel may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Good morning. 
Definitely one of the hardest days of my life. You know you're destined to be dad's favorite child when you happen to be the oldest, the only girl, and he names you after his own mother. I happen to be that person. My name is Maria Candelaria. My father never admitted that I was his favorite, but I knew it, and I think both my brothers Xavier and Steve did too. So it's only fitting that I get to speak a few words about dad this morning. My father was a man who never met a stranger. He loved talking and laughing, and I do believe I inherited both those traits. Dad was a very loving father and left all the disciplinary work to my mom, although he was a very hands-on father and a good one at that. He would spend his Sunday mornings, his only day off, in the kitchen with mom fixing a Sunday breakfast. He would get home from a long, hard day at work, have dinner with us, and then load up the family and take us for a drive around town just so that we could all be close together. He was born in Sonora, Mexico, and his family moved to Mexicali just across the border from here when he was 14 years old. Little did he know that by the time he was 20, he would be marrying the young girl next door, my mother, Josefina. Both sets of my grandparents were great neighbors, and they developed a friendship before my parents were old enough to date. My father was born in Mexico, but his love for the United States was great. He came to the U.S. when he was 21, and the first thing he did was march himself to the local recruiter and enlisted in the U.S. Army. Although he was not medically qualified to serve, he was always so proud that he had taken that action. We were proud too, Dad. My dad and mom had three of us kids, and at times things were tough, but we always had everything we needed. They taught us that even though you might encounter struggles, you can, with God's help, persevere. My mom and dad took their family to Mass every Sunday. Dad, dad was not perfect, but he was perfect for us. In his final years, Dad became afflicted with Alzheimer's, and there were many things he could no longer remember. My brothers and I would sit with him and remind him over and over again things from the past, family, and current events. It's heartbreaking when your loved one struggles like this, but my dad made it easy for us to deal with his condition and that he was a man full of life and laughter and joy. Perhaps that's why no one loved the circus more than my dad. When he was transferred into his retirement home, we were told, well, you know, we're gonna have to interview him first. The next day I was informed by the retirement home rep that the interviewer had actually been my dad because within a few minutes of start, starting the interview process, Dad had taken over and he was asking all the questions. Dad was blessed that even though he had memory issues and couldn't remember places, people, and time, when he and I sat and discussed God, the Blessed Mother, and his Catholic faith, he remembered everything. He received Holy Eucharist every week. Thanks be to God for that. I pray that my Father is now in heaven We'll celebrate Christmas with the Lord and is now able to remember everyone and everything. My kid brother Steve sums up his feelings with these words. A letter from Steve to St. Peter, the keeper of the keys to the kingdom. If cost of admission into heaven means a person must believe in God, follow the teaching of the church, sharing the Catholic religion with his children, to be honest, respectful, and humble, then I'm speaking as a witness for him. Open the gates, let Manuel enter so he can be rewarded of the promise. Love you, Dad.
Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Manuel, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see him again and enjoy his friendship. Although we will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another with our faith in Jesus Christ. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Manuel, who in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers Open the gates of paradise to your servant, Manuel, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Amen. The Lord be with you. With May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now go in peace. Thanks. Be. Like a shepherd, I will feed you. I will guide.
will run and not grow weary for our God.